Welcome to our SBIR 101 discussion. I'll spend uh, the next few minutes describing some of the basics of SBIRs uh, and how they may be of value for you. So let's get started. Now, before I start, I always like to list a set of objectives, uh, and I have two of them here. Uh, the first one is understand the purpose, general format, and function of the SBR program and the applications. And then the second one is know the general CTC programs and the services available. So I'll go over two of these or both of these topics over the next uh, 10 minutes or so. Okay, so let's start with that first objective. The SBR program is actually it's several programs within the federal government. Uh, it was started in 1982 to help provide research dollars to small businesses. Now, Congress mandates that 11 federal agencies devote about 3.5% of their research dollars to fund small business research and development. Now, the overall program is managed by the Small Business Administration, but the 11 agencies have their own rules and their own guidelines as well. Now, prior to this particular program, any kind of novel, innovate, innovative idea that required some kind of serious research, it was difficult to fund. Now, essentially, if you had an innovative idea that you needed money to develop, no one is going to give it to you. So if you went to a bank for a loan, for example, or went to angel investors or, or venture capital, they would all want some evidence that your idea could actually work technically already. Now, the problem is you need the money to show that it could work, but they won't give you the money until you fact show that it does work, in fact. So you're kind of stuck, uh, mostly relying on your own funds or, or those of your friends and family that you convinced to, to give you some money. So enter the SBIR program. Now this stands for Small Business Innovation Research, and it's mostly grants, but there are some contracts. And as you can guess by the name, it's there to fund technically risky, innovative research that's only available to small businesses. Now it promotes high risk, high payoff research. Uh, that it's the type of research that investors will shy away from. And the goal and the hope is that those funds will result in some kind of innovative products that can solve some significant problem. And then with that, then the company can make sales, pay taxes, hire people, and overall help the economy. Now, these are the 11 agencies that have this SBIR money, and I've got them listed from most to least. Uh, the Department of Defense has the largest SBIR budget followed by Health and Human Services, which is primarily the National Institutes of Health. Then there's the DOE, uh, there's USDA, National Science Foundation, there's EPA, there's Department of Education there on the bottom. Uh, and, and I'll mention that there are uh, six agencies now that are mandated to have what are called STTRs. Now STTR stands for Small Business Technology Transfer, and they are very similar to SBIRs, but there are some important differences. And as you learn more about these programs and what you might offer as a project, you might actually decide that an STTR is a better fit than an SBIR. Now, all these funds from all these agencies amounts to about $4.2 billion a year in funding. So that's a lot of money, and we hope you can tap into some of that. Now this slide shows a typical path that a company might take through the SBR process. First, there is phase one money that you'd use to do some research to show feasibility. Basically that your idea might actually technically work. Now the amount of money for these phase one projects varies from something like $50,000 to upwards of $275,000 and sometimes it's actually even more. And typically the project is for six months uh, or it could go as long as a year. Now on the slide, I do list some of the things that goes into a phase one project. So you have to have a technical proposal, you have to have a good project team, you have to have the ability with your company to do the work and then you have to have a budget that makes sense. Now, should your phase one be successful in showing feasibility, you can then apply for a phase two. Phase two is for bigger money. 
and it could be in the neighborhood of $750,000 or maybe a million dollars, or it could actually be more than that. It's a bigger project with the expectation that you'll do more research, hopefully resulting in some kind of viable prototype. Now, a phase two projects commonly last 18 months to two years. It could go a little longer if you need it. And finally, should all of this be successful, you can move on to what's called phase three. Now, there generally isn't any money for phase three from the federal government, but this is where you have enough data and maybe prototypes that the technical risk is pretty much all taken care of and you don't need government taxpayer dollars anymore. In this phase, you can go to market yourself directly or perhaps you can do licensing or at least you have enough data to where angel investors or venture capital will be interested in funding the rest of the research. I also want to mention that for some of the agencies, DOD and National Institutes of Health, for example, you can go directly to phase two if you have a lot of good feasibility data already. So this might require some consideration though. Uh, so oftentimes a company will just see the dollar signs for the phase two and want to jump directly to the phase two when they really aren't ready or capable of it. But I did want to mention that that's a possibility to do. Additionally, it's not required that you actually do a phase two. If you can go straight to commercialization with just the initial phase one funds, then you're encouraged to do so. Now there are some eligibility requirements for a company to be able to get these funds. First, you have to be a for-profit company located in the United States. The company has to be primarily owned by US citizens or permanent resident aliens. And in some cases, venture-backed firms could also be eligible. The company has to be considered small by federal definitions, and that means less than 500 people in the company and all its subsidiaries. And finally, you should have the staff and the facilities to prepare and be able to perform a solid scholarly research project. So keep in mind that this is innovative research, and so you need the skill set to be able to do really solid, innovative scientific research. Okay, so let's look at that second objective, which is know the general CTC programs and the services that are available. Now here's just some of the things that we do. Uh, now on the next slide, I'll talk about the SBIR ad hoc consulting we do, but we have more formalized programs in place as well. We also have SBIR ready. Uh, we pro provide microgrant funding to help you prepare a proposal. We convene review panels to look over and score your proposal. And we have SBIR Advance, which is a matching grant that we administer with WEDC funding. Now keep in mind that everything we do is free. We do not charge for anything. And even better, for some of our programs like SBIR Ready or the micro grants that for uh, ad hoc consulting, we can provide you funding for some of those activities. So now, as you can guess, uh, pretty much our clients come to us for SBIR assistance. Now, it turns out there's something like 1,500 topics across the 11 different federal agencies, and those agencies each have their own focus. They have their own goals. Uh, they have their own formats, their own deadlines. And as such, it can get pretty confusing. So our goal is that we help our clients determine the best agency and topic, and we help them get in touch with program officers. We can help vet your idea uh, when we can try to provide guidance on how to make a stronger proposal. We have templates as well for some of the documents and we have lots of experience looking over uh, and helping improve submissions. And finally, we do help with commercialization plans that are part of the process. Uh, commercialization plans are required for phase two and this is all part of the general assistance that we provide uh, in really whatever area you need. In addition to our activities ourselves, we have a list of professional SBIR grant writers that are available on our website. So if you want extra help, you can reach out to these people who can help you prepare these grants. These consultants prepare SBIRs or help people prepare SBIRs for a living is what they do. We also have a list of commercialization plan writers uh, that our clients can work with. 
So we vetted all these people. We vetted these service providers, and they all have successfully guided people in obtaining uh, many SBIR grants. Now, the service providers can help, but I do want you to know that this is what they do for a living. This is their consultants. They have their own company. It's their job, and they will charge you a fee for their services. But we do have microgrants available to offset the cost of hiring these service providers. We have $4,500 available to reimburse our clients for the cost of hiring and using the service provider. And we have two microgrants one for the technical project plan and one to hire somebody to help you with the commercialization plan. So you can be reimbursed up to $9,000 for hiring this extra help when writing your SBIR. Now, every company is allowed one each of these microgrants. So you might need to be strategic in deciding when you want to take advantage of the opportunities of getting the microgrants. We also convene pre-submission review panels. About three weeks before a major deadline, we'll invite our clients to send us their most up-to-date draft, and we'll run it through what we call a mock panel review. So we try to mimic the federal review as close as we can. We score the proposals like the federal review do. Uh, we have the panel describe the strengths and weaknesses of the proposals and try to provide constructive feedback to help improve the proposal. Then about two weeks before the deadline, we send the results back to you where you can then use the criticisms to hopefully make a better proposal. Now, again, this is a free service. We don't charge for this. And then we typically do this for NIH and NSF, but we have done it for other agencies as well. Now, probably our most significant program is SBIR Advance. This is a matching grant for those companies that have a phase one or a phase two grant that's been funded uh, it's already underway. We provide up to $75,000 for phase one and up to $100,000 for phase two. And it turns, back, it turns out that you can come back twice for phase two matching uh, for a total of $200,000 to match your phase two SBIR that you've been funded. Now remember the SBIR funds come from the federal government and they are allowed to be used for the technology and the scientific research. They want you to commercialize your product, but they don't give you very much or any funds for that commercialization activity. The SBIR program fills in that gap. Any commercial activity that's needed, things like IP, patent work, market analysis, uh, customer validation work, all that can be paid out of these SBIR grant, advance grants. Now, the technical work is generally not supported with these funds. We fill in that commercialization gap. Okay, so that's the outline of some of the things that the SBIR programs have that are available for you, as well as some of the things that we do. I invite you to talk to us about your idea, and perhaps we can help you prepare an SBIR grant or an STTR grant and get it funded. Thank you.